When control engineers are building Ethernet IP networks, they make three big mistakes. And today I want to talk about what those three big mistakes are. I'm John Rinaldi, I work for Real Time Automation in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I've got some great information here I think that, that people really don't think about when they're trying to architect an Ethernet IP control network. Most people think, that's all I got to do is get, out of, get, get a whole bunch of devices that have been conformed by the ODBA, and then I'm good. Just hook them all together and away we go. That doesn't work. So the first mistake that people make is not using full duplex on a, full, on a fully switched network. So what do I mean by that? Fully switched. People are still using other things other than e switches. Uh, some people are trying to do Ethernet IP using hubs. Some people are trying to use Ethernet IP using other kinds of physical layers. One of the things that people don't under really understand is that in the Ethernet IP and SIP specifications, it doesn't say much at all about the physical layer. There's a bunch of stuff about the, about the connectors and things, but it really doesn't say you can't use hubs. You can't use old, the old original Ethernet trunk, trunk line to connect things up. You can, you can make these mistakes, so you, but you need to use a fully switched network, so it means you need to use switches, and I prefer actually managed switches, and you have to make sure that all your devices are using full duplex. Full duplex means that there's traffic going in both directions. Now what happens a lot of the time is you have a switch, and the switch is connected to some device. That device, that link, when that link starts up, these two start negotiating. And when they start negotiating, they end up with having some kind of error, and this ends up being a half duplex kind of communications link. Now that doesn't hurt you terribly. Where this hurts you is if you have a linear segment of a whole bunch of devices, and you know maybe you have 25 devices on a linear segment off that switch, and device number 15 had this problem, and you ended up where you've got half duplex on this link, now all of that traffic for all of those things is going to be affected and, it, and it's not going to be optimum. So you really need to use managed switches so that you can monitor this and, real, and understand when some of this stuff happens. So that was the first mistake is not using full, full duplex and fully switched networks. Mistake number two, number two is not giving control messages priority. Control messages get priority all the time, no matter what. So there's a lot of, you know, some people think this for granted. They just said, oh, well, you know, we'll just, they don't even configure the switches, so they don't even configure the priority. Generally, you need two priorities on an Ethernet IP network. Your control messages get the highest priority, everything else gets a lower priority. So any other traffic, if you've, if you've got IoT traffic on the network, you, you shouldn't, but if you have that, if you've got some kind of acyclic traffic that is on the network, then that should all that stuff has to be subjugated so that the control messages get priority and those messages get through before anything else. Third thing, the third thing that people do uh, that they shouldn't do is that they they just assign they put a, they get a network together and they drop they drop a PLC here and then there's some devices. And then some more devices, and they have another PLC, um, and some more devices, and they just kind of, they, you know, all of these off a, off a switch, of course. You know, and they just, they don't, they don't take any time to think about how to do this. The optimum way you want to do this is for every PLC, you have one managed switch. Managed switch. So, then if you've got a second, if you've got a second PLC, you, have, you buy a second managed switch for the next PLC, so you segment these networks. So now you have a control network that has one PLC that essentially provides one function. Now this does a whole bunch of things for you. There's this whole bunch of advantages of this. Because you're doing a managed switch, you can monitor it a lot better. And, if, and number two is that you can address these things identically because maybe that they're just in two different cells, but they are doing the same kind of function. So if you find a bug in this PLC program, you can just copy it over to this PLC program because everything is addressed the same. So the addressing, for example, if you address all your drives using private addresses, 192.168.100 point, say that there's 50, 
And then you have a drive over here that's also dot 50. Now you can just copy the PLC. If you make a change to this PLC program, just copy it right over there. The addresses are all the same and boom, it's, you're, you're done. You don't have to worry about re-addressing everything. So you want to organize everything along with man one managed switch to one PLC. My W is not very good shape there. So those are the three things. Control messages get priority, use full duplex, and switching networks and architecting your system so that every PLC uh, has a managed switch. Now these are th some of the recommendations that I'm giving in the new book that Gary Workman and I wrote. Gary Workman's got 30 years of experience putting Ethernet IP networks together. We're coming out with a book shortly that will that'll explain all of the 12 recommendations for building Ethernet IP control systems. So if you want to get that book, there'll be a link below where you can get on the list to get that book. We'll be glad to get one out to you as soon as it comes out. My name is John Rinaldi. I work for Real Time Automation in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We move data around the factory floor. If you need to have any, have any problem at all with moving data, we're the guys to call. Thanks very much. <music>